Hey guys, I'm Leo Reinhardt and welcome to the first episode of the Gear Review in 2018. I've been doing this show for a while and I was asked a lot why do I actually call myself a guitar maniac. Well, guitars are sort of the only thing in this world that I'm interested in. Everything I do should involve guitars in it and I can't get enough of those. If an average person asks me if I really need this many guitars, I'll always find an excuse. For example, for nice clean tones I use a Stratocasters equipped with single coils, but if I want to kick it in an overdrive I use the humbucker equipped guitars. I'm not a fan of a lower tunings, but if I have to play in a metal band which use the lower tuning I'd simply use my 7th string. And of course the bass players. Man, I hate those guys. How do you ruin a perfectly good studio session? You let a bass player record his own part. And what do you do if you want to get the job done? You record a bass part yourself. And that's why I have these two babies as well. And of course, I have a couple of grandpa's guitars. I definitely need some more guitars. And of course, if you have this many guitars, you need a lot of strings. And I really mean a lot of strings. I made an experiment a long time ago. Each time I had to change the strings on my guitar, I tried out something new that I never tried before. I wanted to see how different types of the strings or different brands sound like. I wanted to make my personal choice of the strings that I like. And the results of this test were kind of shocking to me. Surely different strings sound different, but this difference wasn't this significant to me. And I don't really care whether the strings are made of nickel or steel, whether they have a hexagonal or round core. All I care is a certain gauge of the strings and where the strings are fresh. And there is actually only one thing why I still prefer the Elixir strings. Even though I have a lot of guitars, I use uh, the only one most of the time for practice. But then once in a while I want to make recording sessions and maybe for these recording sessions I want to try out uh, some different guitar than I normally use. And then I realized uh, that the strings are already rusty and I have never played them once in my life. And that's why I decided to use Elixir strings. They are coated and that's why they are protected from humidity and oxygen. And if I don't play these strings, they are actually fresh and I don't have to change the strings before the recording session. I only have to tune this guitar and I'm ready to rock. And recently I came across the Forte strings. They are made somewhere in St. Petersburg as far as I know, but I'm not sure. And they are coated as well. Actually, a lot of guitar players claim that Elixir have some kind of a weird feeling. They are not natural because of their coating and Forte try to make a coating that feels more natural to guitar players. And so let's find out how they sound. If you have been following my channel for a while, you probably know that I like blind tests. But in this case, I decided to skip this step because 
There wasn't huge difference between Forte and LXC strings on a playback, but there is a huge difference how the strings actually feel. But I couldn't show this in this test. That's why I wanted to make a couple of more tests. But before, I want to show a little trick that I saw somewhere in YouTube a couple of years ago. And this is good for understanding what's really going on here. Here is a guitar from the music school where I'm teaching. And actually nobody changed the strings on this guitar for a couple of years. And the strings have lost all their clarity. And the main reason for this is because uh, the dirt and sweat from the fingers come on the strings and especially in between the ones of the bass strings. And here is a little trick how you can bring the strings back to life. First of all, you loosen the strings and then you pull the strings and speed them up against the frets. And in theory all the dirt is coming out of the strings and they get a bit of their previous clarity. And so here is a footage of before and after test. <coughs> doesn't work as good as changing the strings and this brings just a little bit of the clarity and I would use this only if no other options are available. But still you get the point how it works. And what does it have to do with the photo strings? A couple of months ago I made a video about emuzin strings and after making that video I let the strings on my guitar and I used that guitar as my main practice instrument. After playing for about a month, where I practice at least 6 hours a day, I noticed that strings are not as good anymore. And besides, I had to make a recording session. And for this recording session, I wanted to try out the photo strings. And after I put the fresh photo strings, I noticed that they are actually worse than the Emuzin strings that I was using at least 6 hours a day for about a month. For the next test I used two D strings on the same guitar. One of those strings is uh, the, the photo string that was fresh from the package and the other one was the Emuzin string that I used for a month at least 6 hours a day. And I put those just close to each other, one on as the fourth string and another one as the fifth string. And so here is the test. <laughs> And I don't know how to describe this. It's not like the photo string has some sort of problems with clarity, it's sort of refuses to vibrate. And I had a theory that this might be because of its coating. And so I decided to remove it. And for the next experiment I made something that you shouldn't uh, do at home, because it's very dangerous. I took the low E string from Forte and soaked it in a flammable fluid and afterwards I put it on fire, and this part was dangerous. My theory was that flame and high temperature will remove the coating. And afterwards I cleaned it with a little piece of toilet paper and a contact cleaner. And so let's hear before and after results. Well, 
actually before releasing this video I've contacted the manager of the photo strings and basically I told him that they probably messed up with coating because it kills the vibration of the strings the same way like dirt kills the vibration of the old strings. And like in the case with the old strings if you remove the dirt the same way when you remove the coating from these strings it improves the sound. And I sent him the same audio files uh, that I used in this video. And that started a kind of funny back and forth conversation with the manager. And there were a couple of points that we couldn't both agree. It's a matter of personal preferences. If you don't like our strings, it doesn't mean that they are bad. No, it's not true, because as I told before, I don't care which strings to use. I can use nickel or steel strings, I can use strings with hexagonal or round core, and I don't care if the strings are from Ernie Ball, Daddario, Dean Markley or whatever brand, and for crying out loud, I actually tried out the Harley Benton strings. They cost like 99 cents for a package, and I must admit those are not the best strings in the world. And they wear out pretty fast, but as long as uh, they are new, they have decent sound. And primarily I try I use them with the guitars of the second hand market. Chances are that nobody actually changed the strings uh, on this guitar. And before I actually try to buy a second hand guitar, I just put a new strings and I don't want to put a good set of strings on a guitar which I probably not buy. So I use Harley Benton strings for this purpose. And they are actually pretty decent strings and I used them at least once in the studio sessions. And I don't mind to play the strings, so they kind of get the job done. But I really would have a problem with, of using the coated photo strings in the studio because they simply don't vibrate. So no, it's not a matter of personal preferences. It's something wrong with the coating of these strings. That's my whole point. A lot of top musicians use our strings and we get positive reviews from them. <sighs> of course the top musicians use your strings and that's the whole point why I wanted to try them out as well. And in fact one of the musicians that you endorse said a lot of good things about your strings. That those are like the best strings he ever played. And he's an incredibly talented musician and he knows the difference between good and bad strings. But I know for a fact that he uses the non-coated strings and he actually tried the coated strings and he wasn't satisfied with those. And that's the whole point. I think that you messed up with the coating. And I want you to check out maybe to improve a couple of things. Our coating is so thin that it doesn't have any effect on the vibration. Dude, seriously, I sent you the audio files and you can clearly hear the difference, can't you? Could you make the same test with overdrive? <sighs> no, I won't make another test with an overdrive. And I think this is the one thing that I'll mention a lot in the future. A long time ago I made a video about uh, different pickups. I compared Dimasio to Giovanni and to Wilkinson pickups. And in this video I mentioned why I don't uh, use uh, the overdrive if I test pickups or strings or something like that. Because overdrive kind of changes the signal. It's not uh, just the ordinary waveform, it's just a squared processed signal. And it sort of masks all the uh, kind of differences uh, that you can actually hear. Well, overdrive is nice if you play hard rock or something like that. It's uh, good for playing, but if you test different things, you don't use overdrive. And I really hate those videos uh, in YouTube where you try to figure out uh, how good the pickups are and everybody kind of kicks it in overdrive and put three distortions and a lot of compression and... You know, it sounds like any other pickup and I don't know whether I like it or not. And that's why I don't use overdrive for my tests. And 
After that I tried out uh, the Jailhouse Rail 2 pickups and I made video about them and I actually didn't use overdrive there. And then in a comment I got something like hey dude where is a test with the overdrive? I don't do a test with overdrive. So and in fact you can clearly hear how the string actually sounds before I uh, remove the coating and after that. So what is the problem with you? Can you understand that your coating sort of kills uh, the vibration? Our coating is so high quality that you can't actually remove it this easy. Dude, challenge accepted. For my next experiment I'll use the induction cooktop. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, it hits the metal with electromagnetic field. And the only requirement for this metal is it should be magnetic. So are my strings. I wanted to heat the string to extreme high temperature, but unfortunately the string didn't have enough critical mass, so the cooktop didn't start. And that's why I used this espresso pot as additional load. And as you can see, the string started to heat itself and it started to smoke. And I guess if there was any coating, it simply burned out. Well, those strings look like a piece of shit right now, but let's take a listen how they sound. And so it finally happened. I found the worst strings ever. And it's not like these strings are some Chinese knockoffs from AliExpress. This company is actually trying to work with the best musicians. And maybe the non coated strings are pretty good, but their experiment with coating didn't go too well. And these strings, well, they just suck. And another thing that pisses me off is the attitude from the management. I specifically sent them the audio files and description of what was wrong with their strings and they're like, dude, it's the matter of your personal taste. Well, but maybe they're right, I don't know. Well, and now I have a lot of sets of strings where I can barely use because I don't like how they sound. And so I might just as well give away to you guys. And here what you will have to do to get these strings. I know that there are a lot of YouTubers out there and a lot of you guys make a similar show like me where you review different guitar gear and if you want to feature these strings on your show just leave a comment below and maybe you can prove the point of the management of Forte or maybe you can say that I was right after all. I have here 11 sets of electric guitar strings well, I use uh, the 9 to 42 gauges of electric guitar, so I don't have any others. I have 5 uh, sets for acoustic guitar, those are 10 to 50. And I have 1 set for bass guitar, 40 to 100. Well, just leave a comment below and I choose uh, random guys and send each of you one package of a string to feature on your show. However, I have a certain criteria of uh, quality of the show. What does it mean? Well, first of all, I don't like uh, the shows where everything is sort of out of focus and just pointless uh, videos. Well, yeah, guys. Here, streams. You see, it says right here, for the... 
Second thing is sound quality. Seriously, you are reviewing the music gear and the sound is the most important part of it. That means you should have a basic idea of mixing. And that means don't use the audio from your camera. And if you still make vertical videos, you suck. And so that's all for today. Have a nice day and keep on rocking. And don't buy photo coated strings.